Okay, uh, in continuation to my lecture 4, part 1, just to recapitulate, as what I said earlier, in continuation to the lecture 4 and part 1, this is lecture 4, part 2. Because of the difference in the underwater volume of displacement and a steep gradient amongst all these three ships, this ship will have a tendency to get drawn towards this because the water is first trying to fill up this gap and thereafter till such time the gradient between these two ships are equal, it will get bodily drawn towards this person. And of course, as we said earlier in part one of my lecture four, that this, car, this ship will have a horrendous amount of uh, uh, kind of time for her maneuvering. She will get very fast because once one is that one factor is that she is going down south proceeding towards this direction. Number two, because of this suction or the vacuum which is created over here, because of the underwater volume of displacement of this ship, this ship will have horrendous amount of time to get bodily drifted towards this person. That is one of the reasons that it is very much advisable to keep the vessels at safe distance, though everywhere out at sea, but in particular, in the shallow waters, in the restricted waters. We have seen many a time the ships are passing close enough. The speed is, speed, speed is high. Speed is another factor because the speed at which this one is going, taking into consideration that she doesn't have any UKC problem. If the speed is higher, the water filling up rate will be higher and there will be a big vacuum created throughout this area, throughout the area of her transit. I hope I've been able to make this clear as what I can understand. If not, please do let me know. Now, before I come to explain you the words like bow, cushioning effect, we need to understand few basics. I will be coming back in a very extensive manner as far as the bow cushioning effect is concerned. That is the reason I am reserving this lecture for my next lecture. Prior to that, we will shift to the right side of the boat. See what is happening in the narrow channels when we talk about the effect of sport. This is the vessel, let's say she, she has got a block coefficient of more than 0.7. More than 0.7, the block coefficient. Because of which she'll be squatting by head. Now see what is happening. That the water is because she's dipping down from the bow. The water is passing from the bow because there's a constriction. Think of this as a pipe. What I've drawn with the blue marker. This being as a pipe here, you can see the pipe is getting constricted over here and opening over here. So, because of this constriction, there is a low pressure over here at the bow and high pressure created at the stern or after the midship part of the vessel because of which she is automatically getting tipped. One is because of the squat, another thing is because of the high pressure here. That is the reason when we calculate squat for restricted waters, it has got a factor of 2. That is 2 CDV squared by 100. <coughs> Therefore, the effect of squat enhances considerably in the restricted waters. As what I said, a mark here, because of the obstruction, the amount of flow of the water is restricted. So it is automatically creating a low pressure over here and high pressure over here. Because of the high pressure, one, she is dipping because of the squat. Number two, she is dipping because of the, the pressure created, which is trying to lift the stern part of the vessel. So it's double the effect. It's a double whammy, you can say. Now, all this while, in this part, I've discussed 
the underwater volume of displacement. What actually do we understand by the meaning of underwater volume of displacement? And pertaining to that, what do we understand with the center of buoyancy? Underwater volume of displacement is that void what we talked about, what she, how much she is drawing and what is the displacement, that, that much area of the water she is covering and creating a void, as we said earlier. <coughs> now, over here, when we talk about the center of buoyancy, conversely speaking, center of buoyancy is nothing but center of gravity of the underwater volume of displacement. Like we have center of gravity for the vessel, for the load what she is carrying and then you have a center of gravity. Likewise, conversely speaking, center of buoyancy is the center of gravity of the underwater volume of displacement. This part I discussed in my previous lecture also, that if the block coefficient is 0.7, she will sink bodily. And if the block coefficient is less than 0.7, she will go by stern. And if the block coefficient is more than 0.7, she will uh, sink by bow, by head. <coughs> Remember, the effect of squat is a combination of sinkage because of squat and speed plus the change of trim. So let me repeat, the effect of squat is a combination of vertical sinkage as well as because of the changes of trim. Because when the vessel is let's say on an even keel and when she is tipping by head in case of this particular ship, <coughs> when the block coefficient is more than 0.7, the underwater volume of displacement is changing. Not the dead weight, it's the underwater volume of displacement is changing because of which, see, when the ship is uh, even keel, the center of gravity and center of buoyancy are in line, so she is on even keel. <coughs> now, when the ship is tipping because of the score, she is, the underwater volume of displacement has changed and the center of buoyancy has automatically shifted to come to the geometric center of the center of underwater volume of displacement which is giving a ship another sinkage uh, another uh, sinkage in a way as far as the chain of, chain of trim is concerned <coughs> so other thing is also which we cannot undermine is blockage factor the blockage factor is some of immersed cross section of the vessel Midship, uh, immersed cross section of the vessel's midship section divided by cross section of the water in the canal of the river. So, because the blockage factor, the blockage factor is over here that how much the channel is restricted. And that can be <clears throat> explained with this that blockage factor, which is equivalent to immersed cross section of the vessel's midship section divided by cross-section of the water with, uh, with, with, uh, within the canal of the river. Now, <clears throat> when we talked about, about a minute or two minutes ago that when there is a squat effect in anywhere, whether river, narrow channel, anywhere, but uh, the effect of squat is enhanced in narrow channel restricted waters and it's very much predominant and can be seen we can see if there's a ship which is coming you know in the opposite direction and passing uh, let's say close or not very close to us during palletage waters you can see the ship especially the ones which block which and more than 0.7 you can see a, a kind of a you know a tip what she has taken by bow can be easily sighted so what actually is happening there? I have shown a transfer section to make it understand better. <coughs> this being the actual vertical where the metacentric height everything is there. <coughs> what has happened? Because of the change in... Uh, because of the squat, the change of trim has taken place. Why? Because the central buoyancy has moved from its original 
position. I will come back in the next lecture showing the longitudinal side also because of the less space on the board. First, I thought of explaining the transfer side, the transfer section. So, <clears throat> here what is happening that the meta center of the center of point C has shifted this way. In other words, center of point C is here. Center of gravity is still the same until such time we change the onboard weight during transiting or some load shifting during transiting. Then the center of gravity will change. Otherwise, there will be no change in the center of gravity. It's because of the center of point change in the center of point C the tipping thing takes place takes place. So the center of point C, which is the force acting upwards, center of gravity, which is acting downwards. And the direction in which center of gravity is, uh, the, uh, the center of point C is acting is upward. It's basically opposite vertically, one is vertical down, vertically down, and one is vertically up, up uh, upwards. So If we wish to revise what I have today discussed, the interaction between the ships in a narrow channel, I have taken an example of three ships, how they are interacting in narrow channel fairway and the magic thing is, <coughs> you talk about the void, the water is first filling up to cope up with the void of a bigger ship and as, as long as the gradient is steep enough, these ships will have kind of a virtual or maybe physical tendency to get sucked into this ship and also speed is a factor if she's doing very uh, let's say considerable amount of speed as long as she doesn't have any restriction of uh, her UKC uh, policies or UKC is not uh, affecting her then this effect will be multiplied in a narrow channel fairway so you can understand what in my last lecture I had explained about the overtaking vessel. Suppose if the similar scenario we reproduce in a narrow channel, you can understand what effect would it be. So dear all, thank you very much. Stay safe and please do let me know about your queries because basis which only I will be coming back with the lectures to, to help you to resolve your queries. And please do not hesitate to ask me whatever you wish to and also do not forget to go to my page Marine Quest Solution on Facebook as well as you can go on YouTube where I'll be uploading all these videos. You go to the search engine Marine Quest Solutions and like and subscribe. Thank you very much.